Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. Uh, in today's video, we're going to do a little bit more Splunk stuff, but in this case, we're going to create our own custom app. Now, it you can say app and it sounds kind of daunting because you're like, oh man, that's like a lot of things that I might have to like configure. It really isn't. So like an app in this case in, in Splunk is essentially just saying, hey, here are some configuration files of what I want to ingest in. Um, so in this case, we're going to create it so that it ingests a file, a log file that we're going to just output to temp and it will just, just be some random stuff essentially. So this is just kind of to show you say, like say for example, you're writing an application and outputs to a log file and you want that log file to be ingested into your Splunk instance. Obviously, there's not going to be a custom, uh, there's not going to be an, a Splunk app for that because it's going to be custom. So you can create your own custom one and we're going to show you how to do that today. So this video is also sponsored by me, myself and I. So if you enjoy some of the content, want to sponsor me or send me some free hardware swag, my email is in the description below. So, all right, let's get started, guys. Okay, so... The first thing that we will do is log into our Splunk instance. Um, I'm going to just open a new terminal here real quick. So root at splunk.dragon.local. Log in. And then become the Splunk user. The one thing that you want to really know is you really want to do every any any Splunk configuration as a Splunk user as opposed to as the root user because if you create like a file as the root user, it will ultimately become the root user, um, the files and permissions. So permissions is a is a very important thing to know on this. Um, the other thing to know is if like, for example, we created this like log file on like, you know, our GitLab server or a, this log file, you know, exists somewhere else in GitLab. If Splunk, the Splunk forwarder user doesn't have permissions to access that file, it won't be adjusted either. So that's something else to consider while you're doing this. So the first thing that we want to do is actually make so we'll go to op Splunk, which is the home directory of Splunk, um, Etsy, and then deployment apps. So in this directory, you can see that there's essentially just your deployment apps in here. This is where you can either um, have like, you know, your actually Splunk add-ons that have to be deployed out to your universal forwarders. They will go in here or anything custom that you want to make. So in this case, we will make a Splunk test app essentially. So we'll make the directory uh, and call it Splunk test. So then we'll also make another direct, oh, got a test. Then we'll make another directory in that directory called default. So now we're in deployment apps, Splunk test and default. From here, we want to create the inputs.conf. This file essentially just says what are we inputting? What, what are we trying to grab from the server? So we'll add um, the monitor, which is essentially just saying, hey, we're going to monitor this file. Um, and we'll do temp test.log. So we'll just name, we'll, when, we, when we create on the server, it'll be named temp test.log. Um, we'll also put this in an, a specific index. We'll call it test. And then the source type, you can pretty much do whatever this, the source type is more for clarification in your index of being like, oh, I want this to be a, a specific like other source type essentially. But we're gonna just do test also, but you can do whatever. So from there, we will save that. Um, and then we'll log into the GUI to our Splunk. down here. So we're logged into our Splunk. So the first thing that we're going to do is we actually need to create that test index because it doesn't exist. Um, so essentially you could just the index name and then leave everything as default unless you specifically know what you want for these. I just leave them as default. So we'll save that. Then we can go to forwarder management and then we can see that our app is now in here. Um, so we want to actually edit this we all have one wanted to restart on Splunk D and then create a new server class. So this server class, we just call it as Splunk tests also name it the same as that. Um, add the app, Splunk test, save. And then you can add clients, but let's just double check. So after installation, you actually wanted to um, restart Splunk D. I want to make sure that that is actually happens. So then we can go back to server class. You can see edit. And you can see how it has, hasn't been deployed to any clients, which is what I would expect. So you got to edit the clients, specify the clients. In this case, we just use 
every all the clients um, but you could filter between like linux or windows or whatever when you have you know lots of machines or you can filter by like host name in this case we only have one i'm not it's not that big of a deal to me we're going to do it like this but if you had like say for example like a group of application servers versus like web servers and this log file only shows on the application servers there's no point deploying it to the web servers right you just do it whatever application servers you have um so then you can preview it. You can see it matches. There's a green check mark right there. And then we hit save. So from there, um, we should actually be able to log into our GitLab server. So let's open another window. Root at gitlab.dragon.local. Phoned home 16 hours ago. Oh, well. That's, that's not a good sign when it's only phone up 16 hours ago. Um, so that might not actually be working. So let's, let's, let's make sure it actually is working. Oh yeah, it's, it's definitely not started. So, uh, let's make sure we start it here. Is it running? I wonder if it crashed. It may have crashed. Um, grab Splunk. Okay, so it is running now. So this should actually update here, and you gotta give it a few seconds. But um, while while we let Splunk restart there, um, so now obviously we don't have any file in our temp directory that is named test.log. So what we're going to do is just do a simple like echo, um, and we'll cron it so that it happens every minute. So what we'll do is edit our cron tab. Nothing's in our cron tab. Essentially do it for every minute. And for those of you who don't know cron tab, a very useful thing is if you go to uh, look up cron tab guru, um, there's this cron expression thingy. So you can kind of see, hey, like how does cron tab work? It's minute, hours, day, month, and day of the week. Um, so when I do this, it means at every minute. So every minute it will run. Exactly, essentially. But say for example, you want to run something every day at like 3.15 a.m. Then it would be 3.15 like this. So you essentially just walk backwards. So at 3.15 every day, it will run whatever you have here. Um, this is very useful for whenever you have to do something on the back end and you have, and you know that this needs to run at this specific time. Um, so what we're going to do is essentially every minute we will echo this is a test dot 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 into our temp dot test dot log so in the next minute we should essentially see this log in temp up here and then essentially it should um just repeat the same thing every minute so now you can go back to our splunk you see it actually did foam home and then two apps have been deployed so you can actually see here and see which server classes and apps have been deployed so in this case splunk test has been deployed so if we actually go back to our splunk, gitlab server and go to splunk forwarder and look at our var log spl um not uh etsy etsy apps you can now see that we have our Splunk test. Um, so that was deployed from our Splunk server to our forwarder. Um, so it, essentially, you just see, you just see exactly the exact same thing that we saw earlier. What we did. So if you look in default, you can see the inputs.conf. It will monitor the file that's called that's slash temp slash test.log and input it or ingest it into the test index. So now, hopefully. Test.log. You can see the file exists now because of our CRUD. You can see that it says this is a test file. So if it ingests, ingests um, quickly, I should actually be able to do index equals test. And you can see that it actually shows up in here. So this is a test. So you can do this essentially for any file on the file system, as long as the Splunk forwarder user has access to read that file. Um, if it doesn't, it will not be able to adjust because essentially the file won't exist. So what we'll do is actually we'll tail this to kind of show you guys. So in the next, hopefully 30 seconds or less, um, it should appear with a, another line that says, this is a test file, dot, 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 because we didn't change it. So it says, this is a test file, dot, 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 dot. Um, so it happened again. 
we should now see it ingests, and you can see it actually does it almost pretty much on the minute um, that this is a test file. So that is essentially how you create an app and monitor a file. Um, you can do the same thing in regards to monitoring multiple files. You can change it and wildcard it, or you can add multiple monitors in the same inputs.com. So you would essentially do another monitor below it, select test index. So your app is essentially a collection of what files or directories you want to be monitoring. And then it will essentially deploy that out to whichever service you define in your server class and then ingest it into Splunk so that you can actually search for it. So you can see also here it says like source type equals test. This could be anything, but it's a good kind of uh, unique identifier that you can use to specify specifically what you're looking for. So there you go, guys. Now you've created your first app. Hopefully you guys will be using it to monitor your other files or logs that you need to be adjusting into Splunk. So if you enjoyed the video, please please leave a like, comment, or subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.